Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Jimmy and welcome to another video. So in this video, what I'll be doing is going over the basics of Adobe Lightroom 4. Now I know I've already done one of these videos in the past, however it was almost a year ago now, and I've gotten a lot better at making videos, I've gotten a lot better at Lightroom, and I've figured out a few new things since then. So I thought I'd remake this video, hopefully put a bit more into it, and hopefully help a few more people out. Okay, so I'm going to start this off by going over the general layout first. So you can see at the top here we've got this banner which has the logo on the left which can be customized. And then it's got all these different tabs on the right. Now on the left and right hand sides of the screen we've got all these different modules which change depending on which tab we are in. Then down the bottom you've got these options and then what is called the film strip down the very bottom which displays all of your photos. Um, so let's go over importing and explaining a bit about how Lightroom handles files. So you can see here I've got these two raw files that I just grabbed before. And if I highlight both of these and drag them in, you have to be in the library tab to import by the way, you can see that both photos pop up here. Now you can see one photo is ticked which is here and the other one is greyed out. Now the reason this is greyed out is because I've already imported it and it's already in the catalog. So Lightroom won't allow you to import the same photo twice. However you can see this one here has a tick. Now if I had more than this one photo that will be lined up down here, that will have ticks if I highlighted them all. Um, if you want to sort through the photos, you can double click on it, you can see it makes it big, you can zoom in, check detail and check focus and stuff like that, and you can change whether you want to import it or not down here. Now to go back to the grid view, you can just click down here or press the G key on your keyboard and it will bring up all the photos here. Now down the bottom you can sort it by capture time, check state, uh, file name and media type, so you can kind of sort which photos that you want to import there. And then you can change the size of your thumbnails here. So once you've decided on the ones you want to import, all you have to do is go down here and click the import button. And you can see now it's loaded up with just that one photo. Um, so if you want to bring back all your other photos, all you have to do is go over to the left hand side here and click all photographs. And you can see I've got 12 in total. And that'll go ahead and bring them all up here for you. Okay, so the way Lightroom handles files is it uses what's called catalog. So if we go up to file quickly, you can see it has new catalog, open catalog, open recent, and everything like that. Okay, so the way a catalog works is it's pretty much a set of photos. Now you can use these different ways, but the way I personally use them is I create a brand new catalog for each shoot that I do. So for example, if I was doing this engagement shoot that I did last year, I'd call it their name and then engagement shoot, just so I know that's where all their photos are. And another example, say for this car shoot here, I'd call it STI shoot and put the date that I shot it. Just so I know that's where I can find all of those single photos. So it is a big help, it's a good way to organize your photos. And uh, let's move on. So now that we've imported the photos, there's a few options that we can take uh, to view them and kind of rate them and stuff like that. So down the bottom here you can see we've got the grid view which is the exact same as when we're importing. We've got the loop view, which is just full screen, and then we've got what's called compare view. Now for this, you can press C or click the button down here, and you can see it brings up the photos side by side. Now this is especially useful if we have two photos that are very similar. We select both of them by holding control and clicking both of them, and bring them up side by side. Now this is a good way to kind of compare focus, compare the details, and just kind of get a closer look at which one you prefer. Um, so on top of that we've got what's called the survey view, now you can just highlight multiple photos, click that and you can see they all pop up on the screen here. Uh, so this is another good way just to check photos side by side or whatever other ways you might use that. So another good way to kind of sort through and organize your file is using the rating system. So going down here you can see after we select a photo or put our mouse over it, these five dots appear down here. Now this is just a star rating and you can click them all like that. Otherwise it's down here on the full screen view or you can use your numpad keys 1 through to 5 uh, to add a star rating. It's just a good way to kind of go through your photos really quickly, give it kind of a vote so you can go back and quickly sort through the ones that you actually want to edit and not waste your time later on. Okay so moving on to the right hand side here we can see we've got our histogram with our settings that we shot it with, we've got our saved presets, we've got our white balance settings, our tone control, exposure, clarity, vibrance. Uh, keywording, keyword list. Now I definitely wouldn't recommend using any of these adjustments here uh, just because it doesn't give you enough freedom as you'll want. Now keywording is just so you can kind of add keywords to your photos, it's pretty self-explanatory and uh, that's pretty much it. So let's go across to the develop tab and this is probably the tab that you'll spend most of your time in. 
So you can see nothing really looks too different. Everything's set out exactly the same. But as I said, these two boxes on the left and right hand sides now have different things in them. Okay, so starting on the left hand side, we can see we've got the navigator window here. Now this is really useful for kind of zooming in. You can see it creates that white rectangle to where you're zoomed in. Now moving down further, we've got our presets. Now another really useful thing for the navigator is say if we want to check how a preset is going to look, you can see it updates on the navigator as we mouse over our different presets. Now if you're curious as to what preset system I'm using here, I'll put a link to the video on the screen now or in the description. And it's just the SLR Lounge preset system. Okay, so moving down, we've got snapshots, which I will go over in just a moment. We've got our history, which we can go back to any point in our edit, and then collections. Okay, so moving over to the right-hand side, we've got our histogram again. We've got our crop overlay, our spot removal tool, which is used for retouching, red eye correction, graduated filters, and adjustment brushes, which are used for just adding different adjustments to certain areas. Then under that, we've got all of our different adjustments, which go down this entire list. Now I will not be going over all of these in this video since it will take way too long, but what I'll do is I'll put all of the links to my different editing videos at the end of this video, so if any of those interest you, you can check them out there. Okay, so let's quickly explain some of the useful things about Lightroom, starting off with snapshots. So say if we apply a very quick edit to this photo here, let's make it black and white, add a bit of contrast, and everything like that. Let's just say that's the edit that we're happy with, uh, even though it looks horrible. So what you can do is click this plus here next to snapshot or press control N and this box will pop up here. Now let's just call this one say black and white and click create. And you can see that's now under the snapshot tab there. So what we can go ahead and do now is just reset this and do a completely different edit. Let's keep this one color and again I'm not really happy with that but let's say we are. Press control N and call this one color. Now what snapshots allow us to do is we can quickly swap between those two edits at any time and we can create as many of those as we want and it's just a good way to kind of create multiple looks for the same photo without having to erase all your settings. And as I mentioned before you can see your history tab here we can go back to any point in our edit uh, which is really useful. Okay so the next things I'll go over is the previous and reset functions here. So reset is pretty self-explanatory it just resets back to the original image. Now what previous does is it actually copies the settings from the previous photo. So say if I had multiple portraits that I shot in this same session, and for example, let's use this photo, let's say I want those exact same settings, all I have to do is press previous, and it'll copy the exact same adjustments from that portrait photo over to this one. Now an alternative way to do this is if we click this one here, hold the control key and select that photo there, you can see previous now changes to sync. Now what Sync allows us to do is choose exactly what settings are copied over instead of just all of them at once. So you can go through and just say we want the white balance, the tones, and uh, spot removal, and it'll only copy those settings over. Uh, so it's really useful if you've got multiple photos from the exact same shoot. Okay, so that is pretty much it for the layout and everything in this video. I'm not going to go over any of these other tabs since I've never personally used them. Um, what I'll do now though is go over some very useful keybinds that I use pretty much every single time that I'm editing and uh, hopefully that helps you out as well. Uh, so the first one I'll start off with is getting this information up on your screen here. Now to do that all you have to do is press the I key and you can see it brings this up and then press it again it brings up a second lot of information press it again and it turns it off. Now you can change what this displays by going up to view and then down to view options and uh, info 1 and info 2 you can choose exactly what you want to be displayed. Okay so the next very useful key bind is the backslash key now what this allows us to do is quickly toggle between before and after of an edit instead of having to click reset and then undoing uh, you can just click that and it'll go before and after really really quickly without having to load the settings again. Okay so the next one is pressing the L key. Now what this does is it dims the background or you can press it again to completely blacken it. Now this is just really useful if you're kind of showing someone the photo or displaying it to say a client. It's just a good way to take away anything that could distract someone from the photo. Okay, so the next ones are the F5 to F8 keys. Now what this does is it quickly hides all the different modules. It's a good way to make it full screen really quickly without having to click all these different arrows. Okay, so the next one is, as I mentioned before, Control N to create a new snapshot. Okay, so the next one is the V key. Now this is just a really quick way to convert something to black and white instead of pressing up here. 
So it's just a very useful hotkey if you want to see how something is going to look in black and white. The next one is actually while doing adjustments. If we hold our mouse over the adjustments, if we press the up and down arrow keys, you can see it goes up in smaller increments. It's a lot more accurate and a bit more progressive than kind of just dragging the slider up and down. And I use that whenever I'm adjusting my photos. And the next one is to reset the settings. Now instead of trying to drag it back to zero or typing zero, you can just go ahead and double click on the name of the adjustment and it'll bring it straight back to zero. Okay, so the next one is while using adjustment brushes. So if we quickly bring that up and we want to paint this in, if we want to see exactly where it's affecting and where it's not affecting, we can press the O key on our keyboard, brings up this red overlay so you can just make sure that you haven't missed any spots and it's not affecting anywhere where you can't really see it. So that's a very useful key while doing adjustments. And the last one is holding the Alt key. Now this is very useful for say sharpening. So you want to make sure that you don't over sharpen a photo and you want to make sure that you're sharpening everything that you want to be sharpened. So a good way to do this is by holding the Alt key. You can see if we hold the Alt key here, it kind of changes it to black and white. We can see the radius, we can see exactly where it's affecting. It's a good way to make sure that we're sharpening exactly what we want to sharpen and we're not going overboard. Um, so it's a really good one for say masking here where we can control exactly where it is being sharpened. And it's just a lot easier to see it there than kind of just here where it's just showing you the final result. So that is it for this video guys. Here's all the videos as I mentioned. You can just click these here or check in the description and it'll take you to the videos where I show you how to do that effect. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to hit that like button to help me out. Uh, you can also check out my Facebook page if you'd like to see my photos as I'm taking them. I also link to some videos there so that might interest you if you want to keep up to date. Or you can check me out on DeviantArt here where I kind of just post the photos that I consider my best. Uh, so thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.